Hello, David Taub here. Hope your chord changing is going well and I hope you're getting these mechanics of the changes down and you're working on your changes two at a time. And now I'm going to suggest some popular songs that you go out and learn or consider learning that is going to string together two, three, four chords and you'll be playing them with in playing with strum one or strum two or with a quarter note strum at first and I want you to use these songs as vehicles. Remember, we use songs as vehicles. The goal is not necessarily to learn the song. The goal is to work on your strumming, your timing, your chord changing, your rhythm, okay? And the nice perk is you get to learn a popular song, okay? So, um, and these songs are readily available. You can find them on the internet or, or, or whatnot. And the ones I'm going to prescribe to you right now are mainly songs with three or four chords in them, some with a couple more. And I'm going to give you some easier ones at first. And then I bump it up a bit to some harder ones because you want to challenge yourself. I'm always challenging myself to learn tough pieces of music, to do hard things on the instrument because that's what makes you a better player. Okay, you just don't want to be practicing D to G all the time. Once you got that down, move on. All right? Still hit it every once in a while, but move on. And I'm going to give you some songs that are going to take you a while to work on. So, again, write these down in your practice regimen. And these are vehicles to use to get proficient at these changes. So important. Proficient at your rhythm, at your strumming, at your timing. Now, a lot, whether the song is acoust played on acoustic or you play it on electric or it's originally recorded on acoustic, it doesn't matter. Okay? Play it on whatever you have, acoustic or electric. That's the beauty about music. You could play whatever. It's still a guitar. Same thing if the song is played, you know, arpeggiated, you, you, and you, we haven't gotten to arpeggiation yet. Um, arpeggiating meaning, like for instance, if I hold the G chord, if I strum that G chord, that's kind of the way we've been playing it. Arpeggiating meaning you're going to pick the notes. I'm still holding a G chord. And a lot of times you're picking in a pattern. So that's called arpeggiation where you're holding a chord but you're picking the notes individually. And that's arpeggiation, and we'll get to that in later lessons. But if a song is arpeggiated, you could still, in many instances, do it with a strum, okay? Because it might just be one measure or two measures on the arpeggiation, then another chord, so you could strum it. So just because a song is played a certain way doesn't mean you can't practice it in a way to that coincides to the level that you're at. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna give you some examples of that now, all right? So, use these songs as vehicles. Don't get too caught up on learning songs, all right? Remember, you're learning guitar. The songs are used as a vehicle and a fun way to practice, okay? So here's some songs that I'm gonna give you, and we'll start off with some songs that are basically uh, G, C, add nine, and D. Probably, you know, every th those chords should be very familiar, and you should be able to go G to C add nine, C add nine to D. A very good song, which the whole song is basically G to C add nine to D, is uh, the acoustic version of "Story of My Life" by Social Distortion. The acoustic version. Mike Ness played it at a club in um, Orange County, I believe. Uh, but very cool. Um, it might be tuned down to E flat, I'm not sure. So if you want to play along with some of these songs like we talked about in an earlier lesson on tuning, some bands tune to E flat tuning where they tune each string down a half a step. Okay, now you could do it in standard tuning, but if you go to play along with the CD, it's going to sound off because you're not in tune. So you might want to, if you're going to play along with the CD, tune your guitars down a half step. Guns N' Roses does that a lot. Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, lots, live, lots and lots of bands do that where they tune down. Don't let that throw you off. Um, so that song's a good song, G, C, add 9, and D. That's it. So you could be playing that today. Um, Green Day, the, do a strumming version of... Um, Times of uh, Good Riddance, Times of Your Life. That's what I was talking about before. You know, he kind of arpeggiates that, but play it as a strum, right? G, C, add 9, and D. And then it goes like E minor, D, C, add 9, G. So basically that whole song is just G, C, add 9, D, and E minor. Only four chords or so. It's easy. You could be mastering that and having fun with it and strumming it. Um, another good one at this point in your journey would be a song like uh, Turn the Page by Bob Seger. Now um, Metallica did a cool cover of that but the Bob Seger version is a nice one for you to practice because he stays on the chords for more than one or two measures each chord. Uh, the song is basically uh, E minor to D to A and uh, there's a C in the chorus. So basically the E minor D and A is the main verses and it has four chords the whole song, right? But you're going to be on each chord in those verses for the most part for four measures you're going to be strumming that E minor. 
So you're going to be on the chords, you know, not just one measure or two, but four, and that's great practice for your strumming. So like if we're going from that E minor to the D, four measures on the E minor, down, down, up, up, down, up, one measure, two measures, down, down, up, up, three measure, down, now C4, now we're going to change, D, up, down, up, down, two measures, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, three measures. Okay, and then you change again, so you see that's great practice, um, staying on the chords longer. All right, good work for your str strumming and your timing. So that's a very good song, only a couple of chords that you could be playing. Another great song that you could work on at this point in your guitar journey is uh, Last Kiss. And that's a song that was covered by Pearl Jam, but it's basically just four chords, G, E minor, C, and D, okay? And uh, it's a great little four chord change that you could be playing, and uh, we actually have that one for sale on our uh, website, or uh, if you're interested in purchasing the DVD, two hour DVD, um, but that's a great song to practice that G to E minor, G to E minor, E minor to C, E minor to C, like we talked about, C to D, C to D, D to G, all a lot of that is shared fingers and clustering. So that's a really good song that you could be playing very quickly, all right, and use as a vehicle. And try to do it with a quarter note first, then do it with an eighth note, strum two, then try it with strum one, see which one you like best, all right? And remember, slow it first, okay? So that's another good song that you can uh, use as a vehicle to further you along in your guitar journey. Uh, knocking on Heaven's Door. Uh, Bob Dylan, I think Guns N' Roses covered, Guns N' Roses did a pretty cool cover of that. That's only a couple of chords, G, D, A minor, then G, D, C, all right? Great change work there, so, uh, and a cool melody line, so you could work on something like that. Um, if you want to do a Beatles song, a good Beatles song to start with would be like Hey Jude. Um, it's basically a D to an A to an A seventh to a D, one measure each, then it goes G, D, A seventh, and D. Now, you might not know the A seventh chord, dominant seventh, or the D seventh chord, so just go down to about lesson 73. You know, skip around here and there. You know, sometimes you could bend the rules a little bit. I know I said take these lessons in order, or just go to the chord library and learn an A seventh chord and a D seventh chord, and you'll be able to play Hey Jude. And with that song, right, at first, just strum them with a nice slow quarter note. Or all these songs at first, if you, you don't feel you could do it with the eighth note in time, take it with a quarter note. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? So I'm just going with a nice quarter note. And then when you get proficient at the change, try it with a nice slow strum pattern, you know? more sophisticated, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, so remember, um, nice and slow with the changes and you know, dive right into an eighth note strum if you're ready or go with quarter note. Hey Jude sounds good with a quarter note. Uh, another one would be uh, Patience by Guns N' Roses. That's nice because it's slow. Very slow strum, mellow, C, G, A to D and there's an E minor in there. Now that has a G to C change. So um, that will give you work with that change. See, these songs look, look great. Think of these songs as like, not songs, but song lessons. You're learning something. Even if you let's say, oh, I don't, I don't like Guns N' Roses. I don't want to do a Guns N' Roses song. It's like, no, don't think of it like that. Think of it as a song lesson. You, but you do need work on your G to C change, right? And every song, I look at it like, Maybe I'll learn a new chord, or a new strum pattern, or a new melody line, or a new way to play something, um, or it might inspire me to create something else. So, you know, there's a lot of lessons to be learned that these songs can be picked apart. And even if you don't necessarily like a certain genre, give it a try. It's, you're practicing, using it as a vehicle, and you might learn a few things, right? So the Guns N' Roses is, you know, uh, the G to C might be a little bit more challenging, but push yourself, okay? Um, and that's a nice slow strum song that you can be playing very soon. Uh, Bad Mood Rising, CCR, Credence Clearwater Revival, which is basically D, A, and G in different versions, different combinations of D, A, and G. A little different strum, but again, it's only a couple of chords. Um, Let It Be by the Beatles, you can give that song a try, um, but you'll have to change the key if you want to do it now. That's, I believe the original version was in the key of uh, C, and then if you want to play it in that version, though, you'd have to play an F chord, 
All right, here's a great example of how you could change the key of a song to meet where you're at in your playing uh, along the course, as far as, you know, uh, the chords that you know, because it's going to take you a little while to get that F chord down. So if you change Let It Be and play it like in the key of G, then you won't have to play an F chord. Yeah, so if you change the uh, key to the key of uh, G, then the chords would be like G, D, E minor, and C. So no F chord, so you know those chords. Again, that, that song has that G to C change, so that's going to challenge you a little bit more. And then if you want to take probably the hardest one that you could do now out of this particular list would be a song like Take It Easy by the Eagles. Now that song has a lot of chords that you already know, like A minor, C, you know, G, E minor, but there's G to C changes in it. And the other thing about that song is sometimes they're on chords for two measures, sometimes one measure, they switch, it's faster. So that one might take you a little longer, but knock it out a little bit at a time. Maybe try to get the first line of the verse down or the, the verses, then go on to the chorus. So you take it in sections, the more complex songs. But again, I want to give you, give, I wanted to give you some easier ones and some harder ones. It's to push yourself. Okay. So use those songs as vehicles, give them a try, they're readily available, you can find them anywhere, pretty much, and the, that's not the hard part. The hard part is that finding them is easy. The hard part is being able to play them in time with a strum and um, sounding, uh, copying that feel, okay? And remember, just because a song is played on acoustic or electric, it doesn't mean you can't do it vice versa. If a song is arpeggiated, play it with a strum. Take these with quarter notes, strums, all downs at first, if that's where you're at. Or, you know, you should pretty much have one strum one, strum two definitely, and strum one almost pretty proficient by now. So give them a try with those and push yourself to the next level. All right? Okay, enjoy that. If you have any questions, you email us, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Rock on!